This is number three of four of the settings videos. Again, the setting is the gear there, so I'm going to click on that. This time we're going to go down from general to wallpaper. So from general to wallpaper. So when I click the general tab, I'm going to get a couple of things that I want you to look at. Uh, the first one is the about section. The only thing I really want to point out here is the first, I guess I could point everything out here. You can actually change the name of your iPad because right now it might just say iPad. So if you click that arrow, you can change it to whatever it is. If you have multiple iPads, I would name like one iPad 1, iPad 2, iPad 3, and so on and so forth, just so you know which one's which. Um, this software version, you want to be sure to check that because that sometimes has an update. This is telling me the model number, the model name, sorry, and then the model number, and then the serial number. The only time you'll need those two is if you have to call Apple or chat with Apple, they might ask for those. Um, the next thing is that arrow over for coverage. Mine's expired. Usually they give you a certain amount of time after you purchase your iPad that that's covered, and then after that, it's all finished. Um, this next section tells us a, a lot of information in terms of storage. So this iPad is a 16 gig iPad, and right now I have 3.59 available. I have four apps on there. I have 2,273 photos and 89 videos. So most likely, the photos and videos are what's taking up my space. Next, I have the Wi-Fi address, the Bluetooth, um, the SEID number. Again, when I click on that, it's a big, huge number that you might need or might not need. Um, <clears throat> so that's the About section. If I come next to the Control Center, um, the Control Center is the one that if you pull down, and I'll try and do it now, there's my Control Center. So I pull down from the top right-hand corner, and I get a bunch of different um, programs or things that I can run. And right now, you can see that I have the silence mode, the timer, the camera, and the screen recording. I can also add some of these other ones in as well if I wanted to. So if I wanted to add another one, like notes, I could hit the plus button, and now all of a sudden you'll see that my notes is there. If I pull down the note, and there's my notes section that's over there. So <clears throat> that's the control center. Um, you can toggle that on or off so that when you're using other apps, you can actually still use it. Um, so that's a great feature to have. The next section is the display and brightness. Um, some folks like to have the light brightness that I have now. Some other folks like to do the dark. And depending on when you're viewing your iPad or if you're in bed and your significant other is sleeping, you can turn it to dark and still use your iPad. You can also toggle this on to do automatic. And so it tells us that we're going to do it from dark until sunrise. And so it kind of works according to the clock. I'm going to turn that off because I like it to be light for these videos. Next is brightness. Um, brightness is something that can be affected the battery life. And so you can see that I got really bright. I'm in the medium and now I'm really light. So depending on what you prefer is what you can do there. Night shift is exactly what we just talked about. Auto lock. If I'm not using my iPad for the next five minutes, it will lock up. So then I have to put my passcode on or my thumb or whatever. I might need to do and I can change that um, to never two minutes and so on five, ten minute, five minute increments um, the next one two is accessibility kind of the text size so right now my text size is like in the middle if I drag that you can see that my text is starting to get a little bit bigger I like to kind of keep it in the, the middle um, I'm not at that age yet where I need to make the font size larger yet so and I stress that word yet and then the next thing is bold text. It just kind of makes everything a little bit bolder. So maybe again, you need that. that. So I'm going to scroll. Um, so that's the display and brightness. If I go to the home screen and dock, so again, some other things that we can use. I can use large app icons so they're a little bit bigger than what I'm currently showing. So this is what I'm currently showing. And if I change this to large, I minimize this, you can see they're a little bit bigger. So again, personal preference, what it is that you like. I'm going to turn that off. Um, when I download new apps, I can, do, I can do one of two things with them. I can add them to the home screen, or I can add into an app library only. So that, that again, you'll have to play with that and see what you like. The dock is this bottom section down here where you see the, the Dash app. You see the um, settings, the notepad, Safari, and then I have a folder of a couple of different apps that are down there. So that's basically saying that I can show the app library in the dock. And that's what this is right here. All the way over to the right is the app library. 
and then I can show suggestion and recent apps in doc. And so those are just recent ones. So I was on notes earlier, I was on Safari earlier, and I was on the settings earlier. So that's why that's there for us. And then notification badges, can I show them in the app library? And so again, personal preference, do you like that or don't you like that? So that's the, I'll go to accessibility. We'll do that one and then we'll stop. Um, so accessibility is just exactly what it says it is. So right now for the top section is vision and then the bottom section, middle section I should say is physical and motor and then the bottom two sections are hearing and then the last section is just some general accessibility things. So the first thing I have is voiceover and so when I click on that um, I can talk about my voiceover so I can tap to so when I tap on an icon it will actually speak to me and I can say it really slow or really fast. I can change the speech to a, from a female to a male. I can change the pitch and all those different types of things that you can change there. So that is the voiceover. I also have a zoom feature where I can turn that on and so there's some magnifying things that you can do with that. I also have short keyboard shortcuts which is another section in the course and so I can just click on these and some of these you might want to turn on. Maybe you need to turn them off. So that's there for you. Um, and then I have the maximum zoom level is there. I'm not really sure honestly what that is. So then next I can go to display and text. And these are just some different things again you can play with to see which one works for you and which one doesn't work. If you just want to leave them all off, you can. I have motion. This means that I can do a bunch of things with my iPad, like I can shake it um, to do things. I can autoplay video previews so that like another one comes up after maybe Apple Apple uh, TV. So those types of things, that's for that accessibility is. Spoken content, um, a speak button will appear when you select the text. You can swipe down with two fingers from the top of the screen to hear the content of the screen. So again, if you need that accessibility, you can do that. And then auto, audio descriptions. Um, it'll actually play audio descriptions for you. A physical and motor, you have the touch, you have the switch control, voice control, home button, Apple TV remote, and keyboards. The one section I'll click in here is the keyboards. And right now I don't have the full keyboard access on. I, don't, I do have the key repeat on. I don't have sticky keys or slow keys. Sticky keys is kind of like an Android thing. And then I can also show lower case, lowercase keys because I like to, to do that. Um, down in the middle section, the hearing. If you have hearing aids, you can pair your hearing aids with your iPad. So if you're listening to something, you don't have to put earbuds in or, or your headphones in. You could do that. Sound recognition. If you're using any sort of, if you're a music teacher, this works really great. Um, sound recognition is just something that will hear things and it will kind of recognize what they are. You have the audio and visual, visual. So you have headphone accommodations, background sounds are off, the mono audio. So it plays on both the same left and right speaker and then I can change the balance if I wanted to. And then I have subtitles and captions. Guided access right now is turned off. Um, guided access is if you wanna lock students or your own children onto one particular app, you double click your home button, you put a passcode in and then they can only use that particular app. And I believe further on in the course, I actually have a video on that. I have Siri, so I can click my home button and hold down and talk to Siri. And then I have accessibility shortcuts. I have that turned off right now, so I can turn some of these on if I wanted to, so that they appear if I triple click. And then per app settings, um, I can customize some things with that particular app. And I'm not, that's a newer feature that I'm not really sure about. So that section goes from general to accessibility.